Hello, Ninth Age community. Welcome to my channel, and welcome back to those of you who have been here before. This is Jobadiah Christensen, otherwise known as Roman's Revenge or Roman Ragnarok. Depending on what game you're playing with me, I do have some other gamer names as well. But in the Ninth Age, I generally am going by Roman's Revenge or Roman Ragnarok per my Discord name. Anyway, here we are. This is match two of the Fading Flame, which is Abrasis's league he organized at the end of 2020. Uh, for match two, I was playing Al Mentro, who is from Germany, on the Warriors of the Dark Gods. I, of course, am playing on the Empire of Sonstal. This is my list. I'm not going to talk through it. Pause the video if you want to look at it, note it down, make fun of it. Whatever you want to do, you're free to do. It's your time, not mine. Uh, this is my opponent, Warriors of the Dark Gods. Uh, big things that I was worried about are the big things. He had two Chimera, he had two Chosen Lords on Chimeras with wings, so they fly 816. Uh, both with like two up, four up saves. Kind of nasty, but a lot of points. Also, he had two Feldrake Elders down here at the bottom. Let me just switch to the laser pointer. Perfect. Here we go. So, between the two Feldrake Elders and the two Chimeras, those are the big things I'm worried about. Wasn't that worried about the Warriors because he only has 16 of them, but as we'll see later on, the big thing I forgot was... Warriors have two attacks each. Uh, I can always forget that, so I see that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, what, 17 attacks? I don't care. No, he's got two attacks each, so it's actually 25 attacks. That's a big difference. Um, Master on Alchemy, which is decent against my list, especially my wizard on the Arcane Engine, because all I have is Death Cheater, and uh, Pyro, or Flaming attacks go right through Fortitude saves. Uh, Barbarians, which I knew he would keep his mage in. He's got only one unit, or oh, two units of chaff. Battle Shrine with the Velgate Orb, which I believe gives him an extra channel. I don't remember. Look that up if you actually care. And three Feldrick's repaired weapons, which I was a little worried about, but not as worried about as the Elders and Chimeras. It is secondary objective was Breakthrough. The way that the Fading Flame League works is that the objective is designated, but nothing else is. So you roll for the deployment and you roll for the map. Now, funny thing happened. We rolled, and I think I rolled, maybe, I don't remember which one of us rolled for map. Uh, I think it was me. I rolled a six, which if you watched my previous video versus for uh, round one of the Fading Flame League versus Just Flow, we played on map six. Since I had just played on it, I said, let's roll another map. Um, as things went, I should realized I should have just stayed with map six because map six is more open uh, for my cannons, and I did decently on that against just flow. Check out that video if you haven't. Um, but then when I pulled up map three, I was like, ah, uh, kicking myself because <laughs> there's this big hill in the middle, not conducive at all to having cannons. Um, uh, and then for once, I actually won the roll for sides. And uh, so mistake number one was I should have just stayed with map six. Um, but I decided, you know, these are new maps. They've just come out like in the last two months and I've only played like three or four of them. I haven't played them all even once, never mind playing a map more than once. And so I said, you know what, you know, we played map six already. Let's play map three. Um, so this was my first time on map three as far as I can remember. Um, <clears throat> so that was maybe a mistake. I don't know. It's good to at least play more maps, right? You never know. So anyway, uh, mistake number two, I chose the bottom, right? I was given the choice of deployment. I chose the bottom, and I chose the bottom right. I think that was probably, well, I mean, top right might have been worse, but if I was going to choose the bottom, bottom left was the place to deploy. The best choice, the optimal choice, I would say, would be have been to pick the top left if I had just deployed in the top left corner that there's a lot more open space. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to break it down a little bit. One of the reasons you're going to want to choose this if you have artillery to deploy this way is so th this hill is in the middle, 
right? It's in the middle, which means that no matter where you deploy, the opponent can make use of this. Because if I pick the top left, my opponent can deploy in the bottom right, and the, he can still use the hill for cover from my cannons. I can't do a thing about that. But what I could have done something about was the fact that because I chose the bottom, he got the top. So he now, not only does he have this hill he can hide behind, he had this impassable and the top that he could hide behind. I should have chosen the top so that it would have only given him um, the hill as something to hide behind, not the impassable. So that was mistake number two, just something to keep in mind if you play with cannons. Or if you're afraid of cannons, always pick the side, almost always pick the side, that has more things to hide behind. And so that was mistake number two. I gave him more things to hide behind. There we have it. Mistake number three was um, he, so I won the roll for the map, or won, I won the roll for sides. And in ninth age, that means that your opponent gets to choose who deploy, starts deploying first. He told me to start deploying first, of course, because he wanted to see where my cannons and um, units would be. Well, as you can see, I took that and I dropped all of my units to go first. Um, and I was telling myself before the game, you know, if the opportunity comes up, get him to deploy. You know, don't drop everything first. I told myself that before the game, and I still, at the beginning of the game, he told me to deploy first. And I think I kind of panicked. I kind of already realized at that moment I'd chosen the wrong side. And I think I just wanted to get the game over with. Even though we were just starting and we were in for another four hours. Um, I just wasn't really in the mood. Um, I had a lot on my plate the last couple of weeks. So anyway. Uh, and it's I've it's hard to deploy at least my Empire armies. It's hard to deploy them piecemeal. Uh, so I didn't want to deploy piecemeal. I like dropping them all. So I, that's why I did it. It was a mistake. I should have deployed one at a time. But... I'm never really sure what to deploy, right? Do I deploy my spears, right? And then he drops one unit. Then what do I deploy? My crossbows, probably, is what I should have done. And then he would drop a unit. And then I deploy, I don't know, my other crossbows? I, I don't know, because really, I wasn't that afraid of his list, because the cannon zone is Feldrakes and his chimeras. My crossbows will shred his barbarians and his warriors. So then all he has is his Feldrake elders and his battle shrine, and his chaff, um, which can't really fight my Imperial Guard that well. So I thought it was actually a decent matchup on list, but because of the way I deployed, he easily could uh, manipulate this. Um, I'm not even going to talk through why I deployed the way I did. I mean, the cannons are deployed where they are to zone stuff, so he can't hide. They're, they're deployed in a way that he, he, can, he can hide from one cannon, but he can't play stuff in a way that's hidden from both. Um... But this cannon on the left isn't really doing much, and it's exposed, right? I only have crossbows on this left flank, so obviously he's going to put a bunch of stuff on his left flank, and he, he and I, I'm not going to be able to zone or get into position with my crossbows. It's pointless to have my crossbows, or my Imperial Guard, excuse me. It's pointless to have my Imperial, my crossbow unit, my light troops, uh, light infantry, not light troops, light infantry crossbows. It's absolutely pointless in this situation to have them behind the wall. Actually, it's not absolutely pointless. It's almost absolutely pointless. And I'll point out the distinction here. Um, normally, you want to place your shooter units behind the wall. Why? Because that way they have hard cover from opponent shooting. But I'm playing against Warriors of the Dark Gods. Guess what? Warriors of the Dark Gods, they don't have any shooting. So, from that perspective, it's pointless to put the crossbows behind the wall. Now, there is an exception to that, and that is the fact that he does have Warhounds. If Warhounds were to try to come up and get in me and charge into my shooting, because that's often what Chaff likes to do, Chaff will charge into shooting, I at least will have distracting because I'm behind the wall. But of course, a smart player is never going to do that. He's just going to outflank you and charge in the flank where you don't have the wall. So, anyway, uh, that was a mistake. I mean, I've already... Now, the game hasn't even started, and I've already made several mistakes, right? My deployment is absolute trash. I didn't like it, but I realized about 15 minutes through the deployment, while I'm trying to play stuff, I'm, I realized I chose the wrong side. I realized I should have chosen the top left. I could have deployed a lot better on the top left, um, but I'd already spent 15 minutes. I'd already declared my side... And as a rule of etiquette, in my opinion, once you make a decision in Ninth Age, you need to just stick with it. Um, so, 
And that goes for things like if you declare a charge, in my opinion, if you say this unit is going to declare a charge, then um, you can't say, wait a minute, I want to declare a different charge first. Nope. You already declared a charge. You got to stick with it. You just got to live out your consequences and live with them. So I lived out my consequences of this deployment. Here is the opponent's deployment. He, of course, hit his chimeras and his Feldrick Elders using this impassable that I gave him to hide behind and um, using this hill to hide behind from this cannon. So this cannon can't really do anything first turn against his big stuff. And this cannon on my right can only shoot at his Feldrakes because his chimeras are hidden behind the Feldrake. So good deployment from him. He's got his barbarians right across. It's breakthrough, so... I mean, if he wanted to, with these Feldrakes on his left, he could just push straight forward, and there's not a thing I can do against it about it. He can also just push forward with these Warriors, because my um, Imperial Guard are kind of out of position. My Spears are absolutely out of position. They can't fight anything on his right flank. So, there we have it. Um, spells, I know sometimes people go through spells. I took... Oh, what did I take? I took Corruption of 10. I took 5. I can't even zoom in. I took Know Thine Enemy. Uh, I took, let's see, 4 spells. So I took Quicksilver Lash, which is number 1 from Alchemy. I took Word of Iron, which is number 2 from Alchemy. Um, I took the number 4, which is Silver Spike. And I took number 5, which is Corruption of 10. And then I took, um, I, ha I have the uh, Magic Item, uh, Magical Heirloom. Which gives allows me to take the hereditary, for, which for Empire means I can choose the number one of a different lore. You can't choose the number one of the same lore. You can't get five spells of the same lore. Only four spells of one lore, and then choose the hereditary from another lore. Or the number one from another lore. So I took Know Thine Enemy. Um, and then of course I have Ice and Fire as a bound spell. My opponent had Alchemy, and he too chose Quicksilver Lash, Word of Iron. Uh, he took, uh, I believe it's Glory of Gold as number three. And... Uh, b -b 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 corruption of tin number five and of course he took his hereditary which was on his battle shrine we'll get on to that in a minute so here's my deployment and here's actually my first turn um i don't i pushed forward with my imperial guard because i realized i needed to zone him right i needed to make sure he couldn't just come forwards and charge into my spears or my crossbows without impunity so I came forward a little bit with my pure guard, and that is it. Okay, magic. So I cast a uh, word of iron on my imperial guard because I was afraid of his hellfire from his battle shrine. And although casting word of iron when your opponent has alchemy is very dangerous to do, just a heads up. Um, let me think. Did I do anything with shooting? Not our magic. That was it. I just got word of iron off. Okay. So, shooting. You can see my cannon. Between my cannon and this crossbow unit, which has two long rifle guys in it, an artificer and a champion long rifle, I did four wounds to this Feldrake. So that was good. I was rolling pretty well on the my right flank. And that Feldrake has six wounds total. I did four to him at one turn. On the right flank... Because this Battle Shrine had the Hereditary spell, Hillfire, which is one of my absolute least favorite spells to play against in the game, surpassed probably only by Wrath of God, I wanted to take care of that early on. So, I fired my cannon at it, I fired my crossbows at it, and I killed it. So that his Battle Shrine was gone, turn one. Just popped that right off the board, which was great. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have shot at these Feldrakes because they have movement 16 and his Battle Shrine only has movement like 10. Uh, so his, his Feldrakes can like move and get out of line of sight of my crossbows a lot faster than his Battle Shrine could. But I just didn't want to have him even have the opportunity to cast Hellfire. That's how much I loathe that spell when I'm playing against it. Alright, so. His turn. Uh, so he moves his Feldrake. That's severely wounded behind the impassable to hide and I can't really do a thing about it because I gave him that impassable to hide behind right if it was the opposite sides he wouldn't have been able to do that very well okay as I said on his left flank he moves his Feldrake unit forwards they're now out of the arc of my crossbow so I'm gonna have to move my crossbows if I want to shoot them which is bad because I have unwieldy right um, and then he's just Hiding his chimeras, um, 
behind the hill, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Magic, he gets word of iron off on this Feldrake on his right. Um, I'm trying to think what I was trying to stop. I think, well, he couldn't see a whole lot. I was trying to stop Corruption of Tin. I did not want him to have Corruption of Tin off on my Imperial Guard. So, I had to let Word of Iron through. I don't know. It's hard to know. Right? Um, so, then it goes to my turn two. This is turn two. Uh, so, I did a little bit of measuring, and I calculated that I could move my Inquisitor out of this unit and put it in front of his Feldrake right by the hill here. To chaff him. And then my plan was to take this right Imperial Guard unit with my general in it and charge into his warhounds in the flank and then overrun and be in position to threaten his middle of his army. Um, but what I didn't take into account was while I did have the movement on my Inquisitor to chaff his Feldrake. I didn't take into account that after charges, <laughs> my Imperial Guard would be blocking, and my Inquisitor would no longer be able to chaff him. So, uh, when you're measuring stuff, <laughs> make sure you take into account the bodies of your friendly units. I did not take into account the bodies of my friendly units. So, that was another mistake I made. So, now now that I did that charge, I now can no longer charge <laughs> up chaff, and I just gave him a juicy flank. So, what did I do? I moved my Imperial Guard. I left Imperial Guard towards the left flank to threaten the left so that he couldn't just push his Feldrakes forwards. I'd be able to, in, you know, engage them. And then I realized I was giving his Barbarians and his Chimera a flank into my Imperial Guard. So I moved my Inquisitor out onto the hill to protect the flank. I know it's not ideal because he could kill the Inquisitor and overrun into my flank anyway, but I figured it's worth a shot. Um, and then I push my spears forward because I want to guard, um, this flank. So, there you have it. I wasn't sure what to do with the, um, Arcane Engine. I played a long time removing this Arcane Engine because I realized once my Imperial Guard killed the Warhounds and overrun, uh, then I have nothing blocking his Feldrake Elder from charging my, uh, Arcane Engine. What I should have done was just moved it up here in this bubble to at least give foresight lightning reflexes in a bubble. Back here it's not doing anything with lightning reflexes. So it's it should I should have just moved it forward and I didn't. So uh let's see. Magic I was able to get silver spike off, but I I think I only did one or zero wounds. I think I did one wound with silver spike on this Felgic Elder. Then it came time for shooting. My crossbows had to move, um, because if I stayed where I was, I gave way too much of a juicy flank they, like to his Feldrix. He would have only needed like a 7 or something. So I had to move to at least extend that range, so that he wouldn't get a good charge off on me. And then I tried to shoot up his Warhounds, and I was only able to, able to kill 2 because I've unwieldy and I'm only hitting on like 6s. Or 5s five, and 6s. Um... Cannon on the right, unfortunately, misfired. I rolled a 1 and... Or, yeah, I rolled either... Yeah, I rolled a 1 and then I rolled like a 2. Uh, and then I was close enough to re-roll with the Artificer. And I re-rolled and I rolled a 1. So I had 3 bad rolls in a row. And this cannon was then jammed for the rest of the game. It can't fire anymore. Unfortunately, because I had a chance at doing a number of wounds to this Feldrake Elder. With the cannon. Uh, so that was sad. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then combat wise, I killed the Warhounds and I realized that with my Inquisitor where it is, my Imperial Guard would now no longer be able to overrun and get out of range. I was just going to give a flank or a rear charge to his Feldrake Elder, so I couldn't even overrun the way I intended to, and so I had to just reform facing him, which meant this is why I should have just kept the Inquis the uh, Arcane Engine back here because. I didn't need the Inquisitor to chaff, I needed to just turn the unit and face anyway, and then I didn't have to worry about his Feldrick Elder charging my Arcane Engine. So these are the things you have to think three phases ahead. You have to think, you know, where is this unit going to end up, and 
everything um, while you're doing your movement phase, or even while you're doing your before you even declare your charges, you actually kind of have to think all this through, and that's why it gets complicated because I need thirty to sixty minutes to think this all through, and that'll just slow the game down too much. So that's my two cents there. Uh, his turn, of course, he charges his Feldrick Elder and his Chimera uh, Lord. This is his Chimera General, I believe, into my Imperial Guard. Uh, good combat, or decent combat for them. I mean, my Imperial Guard are strength 6, so it's not like they can't do anything, but because my Arcan Engine is so far back, they don't have foresight. If if I was farther forward and I have Lightning Reflexes, that changes his combat a little. Although, I, honestly, even with Lightning Reflexes, he was still going to strike first. It's not that. It's really not that big of a deal, actually. Now, now, now that I think about that, um, I really need to know that enemy, which is why I took know that enemy, so that in this situation I would have lightning reflexes and know that enemy, and then I would actually strike it simultaneously or maybe above my opponent. Anyway, his other Chimera charges the Inquisitor. His warriors charge into my left Imperial Guard, and um, of course he's hoping to kill my Inquisitor and overrun into the flank of my Imperial Guard and just wreck this side of my line and now of course that my imperial guard are engaged they his fellow drags can just move forward with impunity his warhounds how did he do that maneuver yeah that's kind of sketchy yeah whatever that's the way the game is he charges my cannon because it's a round base you can basically hit me in any facing which is awkward so he hits me in this extreme flank he sh it's not like the front anyway uh it is what it is so, combat wise, or no, magic wise, he get off Glory of Gold on his warriors, which gives him extra AP. And, well, mostly he didn't need the extra AP, actually. What he needed was he wanted to reroll to wound, so he got uh, flaming attacks on them and then puts, you know, flammable on my unit. And then he still has Word of Iron on. He gets Word of Iron off again. I don't know what I was stopping. Maybe Silver Spike or Corruption of Tin still. <sighs> um. So yeah, there you have it. Combat wise, combat was crazy. I knew this was a pivotal turn. This is turn two, mind you. Turn two, and I knew that this combat phase would literally decide the fate of the game. So, uh, what happens? My Inquisitor, the way I built my Inquisitor, I have agility eight. The Chimera Lord, when he charges, also has agility eight, but. My general has the Manto of Olher, which is an artifact that not many people use, but it reduces the... Mm, how do I word this? It takes away the benefit of charging for agility purposes, because there's a rule in the game, and I can't remember what it's called, um, that gives you plus one agility when you charge. This item removes that when people are charging. So... My art of my Inquisitor actually has agility eight, and my Chimera, the Chimera Lord that charged only has agility seven, so I strike first. Well, I hit him. I think I needed f fours to hit, right? So I hit on the. I had two hits. I needed. I'm strength five, and he's res five. I needed fours to wound. I think he's res five. Uh, and I rolled two wounds. He has saves. I'm only AP. Two with this guy, and, and I didn't roll any lethals because I need to roll a six when I rolled a wound to have a lethal strike. I so I didn't roll any lethals. He's got a two up uh, armor save, which goes to a four up save. He fails both of his armor saves. Then he's got a four up save. He fails both of his ages save, or yeah, he has either ages or or fortitude save. He fails those, and then because I'm Inquisitor, I do D three wounds. So I rolled 2d3, I do 5 wounds, and I just kill him. The Chimera Lord is dead from this Inquisitor. He was shocked. He was so shocked. It was the highlight of my game. Uh, this little 270-point Inquisitor killed the 700-point Chosen Lord on a Chimera. <laughs> um, he was shocked. He said it was 1 in a million that that would happen. I mean, you can see the dice. You can see the statistics. I don't know what the statistics are. Um, in my mind, it'll happen more often than uh, than one in a million. That's why I built the Inquisitor the way I did, to kill enemy characters. That's what they're for. So uh, if he didn't want that, to, if he didn't think, I guess he thought there wasn't even a chance that that would happen. In my mind, there's a chance that that would happen, and I would think two or three times before I would charge 
and Inquisitor in the future. So anyway, that's my two cents on that. That was the highlight. Uh, Combat-wise, I was able to do one wound with Feldrake, but between his two characters, he's able to just munch through. I issued a duel with my champion to protect my general, because as long as my martial general is in this unit, they have stubborn, so they're not going to break as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I issue a duel to his Chimera Lord with my champion just to make sure he can't kill, direct his attacks to my marshal and killer. Um, that combat goes okay. I stay. The warriors kill. Uh, maybe they kill. I think I only had seven Imperial Guard left. They I started with 20. I think they killed something like 13 Imperial Guard in one turn because I forgot he has two attacks. If, if he doesn't have two attacks, that combat doesn't go so poorly. I probably still would end up with somewhere around 12 Imperial Guard, which is better than 7. But anyway, I digress. That was an auto break, because uh, I had took the Inquisitor out of there. If the Inquisitor was still in there, I would have had Bodyguard in that unit too, and they might have held, but they broke. He chased them down and caught him. My Arcan Engine down here had to take a panic test, and I failed. And I was outside of just... Barely out of 12 inches of this, uh, out of my general. So I fell off the board. So I lost my wizard and this Imperial Guard unit on turn two. Um, my cannon actually did okay. I did a wound. Um, so let's see. I would have put, can I draw? Pen. Alright. So, I, I was thinking I should have put my Arcane Engine here. But as you can see then, when his warriors would have char just charged, overrun and charged into it. So that wouldn't have been any good. Uh, yeah, there's nowhere I could have put the the uh, arcane engine to be... I mean, I guess... Well, I only have movement 8. I don't know if I could have even moved it here. But then I would have been... Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It just, I, there's really no, there was really no way out of that. So anyway, it is what it is. Uh, good to know though because I was kicking myself about that. I hadn't checked it out to see if I thought there was a. I, I was disappointed. I lost my mage on turn two, uh, at the end of turn two, and uh, I think in that situation there actually wasn't anywhere I really could have put her. So, all right. Uh, on to my turn. I decide I have this big spear block. I'm going to go into his Feldrex flank. Cause, because I'm hoping that I can charge into his flank and kill, either kill him or break him and overrun into his Chimera Lord and save this combat. And then I'd have two scoring units in position to actually score in his deployment zone. Um, and then I charge my Inquisitor into his Barbarian unit so that I can kill his mage. In hindsight... When I had killed his other Chimera Lord, I should have did a pivot so that I could see his other Chosen Lord, and I didn't do that. Um, I didn't do that. I should have so that I would have had the opportunity to charge him in the flank, and I didn't. So you also got to think about that stuff. I, uh, you know, right at the end of a combat, think about what your units are going to do next in the following turn, whether they, they want to charge or not. And then pivot them, or you know, if you can, face them uh, where they want to go. And I just, I didn't have that in my mind because I don't even think about where I'm going to be charging until it's actually my turn. All right. Um, I don't really have that many movements. I guess his warhounds broke from combat. I think I won combat and they broke. <laughs> all right. So, all right, my turn. Okay. So I charge my spear block into his Feldrake Elder. I charge my Inquisitor into his Barbarians. Then I have no magic. And then I have shooting. I... This unit shoots at his warriors and I kill one. <laughs> so much for destroying them. This unit... I don't know what I was shooting at. I must have shot at the Feldrakes, and I didn't even do a single wound. So that had me disappointed. And then in combat, my cannon actually won combat, so his Warhounds fled. 
but my cannon can't shoot anything. He's just because this is combat phase. His uh, I was only able to do one wound to his Fodric Elder, and his Fodric Elder did two wounds to my BSB. He just kept munching through my Imperial Guard. Uh, so he actually won combat. I think if my spears had been in like a ranked formation, five wide, I might have. I had a. I would have had a better chance of winning combat. I was just confident that I would have had so many attacks because I had something like twenty five attacks. But twenty five strength three attacks with AP one against Res six with a two up armor save didn't do really do any wounds, which was disappointing. Um. My Inquisitor did kill his, uh, his, uh, wizard, so now we both don't have magic, which is nice. But, uh, he's steadfast, so he stays. He holds. Okay, and then in his turn, okay, so then it's already on his turn. Um, his Feldrakes, uh, what do they do? His Feldrakes charge my cannon and kill it. And then they're able to overrun. Well, actually, okay. So his Fel Drakes charge my cannon here. Just draw it. Fel Drakes charge a cannon. Then, they, when the cannon is destroyed, I have Discipline 7 on my uh, handgunners, and they flee. Because the unit is destroyed within 6 in combat. So they flee. Uh, what happens over here? His Fel Drake Elder goes into the flank of Spears. And... Uh, Yeah, with him on their flank. Oh, and then his warriors go into the rear of my Imperial Guard? No, his warriors actually go into the flank. So his warriors and his Fedric Elder both go in to the flank of my spears. Um, so that doesn't end well. And then with all the extra wounds they do the spears... Um... Oh, he issues a duel with his Chimera Lord, so he kills my Marshal. And now I don't longer have Bodyguard. So now with all the wounds caused on the Spears, and with my General dead, my Imperial Guard in the middle flee. And my Inquisitor loses this combat, because I only killed one Barbarian. And so I fled. Uh, so I end up here. So this is now bottom of turn three, and it's looking very poorly for me. Uh, even though I was able to whittle down his fellow Drake, it only has one wound left on it. Uh, so now it's my turn again. Is it my turn? Now I'm confused. Let's see. He charges, I flee. There might have been a turn of combat in between. I'm sorry I didn't take screenshots for it. Um, because really that was all that was happening on my turn was a combat phase. And then it was on to him. Uh, anyway. He, uh, let's see. So he charges his Chimera Lord into my Imperial Guard. He moves his Feldrick Elder over here. Yeah, I'm missing a turn. Uh, maybe. Uh, and then he, he's moving up on my flank. On my right flank. At this point I know it's just going to be a... Very poor loss for me. I was really hoping I could have done more on that turn two. That turn two combat was the big one. Um, he kills my Imperial Guard. Here. I'm able to shoot some warriors, but not enough. Of course, he charges both into my crossbowmen on the right. And then he just moves his Feldrick Elder out of the way to save points on his left. And uh, then he moves his Feldrakes behind the hill so my Inquisitor can't charge him. He has his Warriors now in my deployment zone so he wins objective. After killing my crossbows, I put my Inquisitor here. And that's basically it. Um, I felt it so... Uh, I'll just go into the points. It ended up 1-19. to 19. I, uh, <laughs> I only killed 1849 and he killed 4629 of mine. I felt I had done more than 1849 to him, and that's because I did 5 out of 6 wounds on this Feldrick Elder, I did 4 out of 6 wounds on this Feldrick Elder, and I did 2 out of 4 wounds on this Camaro Lord. 
But guess what? Five out of six wounds only nets you half the, the points. Four out of six wounds nets you zero points. And two out of four wounds nets you zero points. So, even though I felt like I had grinded well, uh, it just was a it just was a bad loss. Uh, and most of that was just a cascading effect of a poor deployment choice and poor deployment, as you can see. So that's what happens when you deploy poorly. Uh, if you've been on my channel before, you've you know that this is uh, my mainstay. It wouldn't be a Roman game if there wasn't a bad deployment. Sometimes I have my moments and I have a good deployment, but. It's still something that I struggle with immensely. Uh, so, yeah. I think I probably should have just cornered real hard. Or something. Cornered down here. Something like that. Anyway. Uh, I think I've given a lot of advice throughout this game. Hopefully you learned something from it. Um, don't deploy the way I did, at least. We can take a look at the rankings. No one else from round two has played their game. So you can see that. Uh, so I don't know. I am I only have 10 points now through two games. Um, Almentro has been on fire the, his first two games. So he's got a early lead. I looked up. It's still a little confusing in me to me how you advance through the league in the Fading Flame. Uh, but I looked it up. And I think the first, th the top three players will move up to the next, so they'll move up to um, group six. The bottom, and then the, let's see, the, the next two players, the middle players in the league, have a chance to move up, depending, I think, on how the well the players played in the league, in the group ahead of them. I'm not 100% certain. It's confusing to me. Abrasis modeled it after the way um, football was played in Europe and around the world, the way those leagues work, and I don't watch those, so I have no clue. But there you have it. Uh, so I'm playing Massimo next, who looks like he only got six points in round one. Oh, uh, so this this is something I should uh, briefly announce. Um, we had one of our players drop. I don't know remember what his name is. Um, but Major Sevy stepped in and is taking his place. I have played Major Sevy before, and I'm excited he's in the league. Who's fun to play against. Um, so Major Sevy <laughs> technically is starting off with 14 points. Even though he uh, didn't actually play this game. That was somebody else. So he's got more points than me. And he didn't even have to play. Uh, but that's just, it is what it is. The league is mostly just set up so players can get games and just learn and become better players. So that's really all it is. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if I missed something. In my uh, during my game, I think I pointed out everything that at least I observed and learned. But I'm sure there are several of you who could have pointed out other things that I did uh, wrong or should have done differently. Um, anyway, uh, it seems like Almentro is on fire right now. Best of luck to him, and I will share with you some more battle reports coming up. I uh, uh, that's all I have to announce right now, except. Oh, I did get me. I am now an official community engagement member with the Ninth, Ninth Age um, staff. So, thank you all for this uh, support on my channel. Without you, that would not have been possible. And uh, I look forward to putting out more uh, battle reports and content for you to observe and learn from.